Uh, all right, receivers, uh, Giants signed Kenny Galladay, four years, $72 million. Uh, Jets signed Corey Davis, three years, $37.5 million. Uh, Redskins signed Curtis Samuel, three years, $34.5 million. Uh, Patriots signed Nelson Aguilar and Kendrick Bourne, two years, $26 million for Aguilar, and uh, three years, $22.5 million for Bourne. Uh, Jaguars signed Marvin Jones, two years, $14.5 million. Uh, Dolphins signed Will Fuller, one year, $10 million. Uh, Steelers re-signed Juju Smith-Schuster, one year, $8 million. I, That was, the, the super, was a, a huge shock to me. And then the Raiders signed John Brown, one year, $3.75 million. So what are your thoughts about the receivers? Yeah, so there are three that stand out to me. We'll start with the obvious one, as you mentioned. Juju Smith-Schuster getting a one-year deal worth $8 million is stunning. Um, he had more money on the table, according to reports, to possibly go to the Ravens or the Chiefs, but it didn't sound like, you know, Kenny Galladay-type money or anything like that. Um, it sounded like shorter-term, like, number two receiver money. Um, so he ended up going back to Pittsburgh, um, which I think is fine for him. Like, maybe I would have gone to a team that has a quarterback with maybe more left in the tank, but... I mean, for the Steelers, getting $8 million and you get Juju back even for one year, that's a win. Uh, the other one-year deal that I really liked was the Will Fuller one for the Dolphins. They were really missing a speed element, potential number one receiver in that offense. Um, Devontae Parker's great contested catch guy. Um, Mike Kosicki can do the same. But now they have that true speed threat, Will Fuller. He could be a number one, really good compliment to uh, to Parker. And I think Tua Tagovailoa is going to love throwing to him. So, I think uh, those two fits stand out to me, but the, my favorite signing is Curtis Samuel to Washington. I mean, he fits exactly what they want to do with offense. He is versatile. Uh, he can play any receiver position. He can play running back. He can catch passes out of the backfield. Um, and now they have a quarterback who can get him the ball downfield. Uh, between his speed and Terry McLaurin's speed, uh, they're going to be really hard to guard. Um, and then you have mismatch threats like Antonio Gibson and J.D. McKissick out of the backfield. Uh, it's it's going to be really difficult to uh, contain every weapon on this Washington offense. So uh, I love Curtis Samuel and getting him for three years and just over $11 million a year. Uh, that could end up being a steal because he's still just 24. I, I think people don't realize how young he is because he's been in the league for four years. And also he went to school with Terry McLaurin. So I think those are probably my three favorite signings of the group. Uh, I don't know what your thoughts on uh, on this group in general are. Um, yeah, well, I, I love the first two that you mentioned, uh, Will Fuller, one year, 10 million. I mean, he's, he's an injury risk, so that's the downside, but for one year, you're not risking very much. Uh, so there, there like, there's almost no downside and you're giving to a, a, a great downfield weapon, um, if he can stay healthy. So, uh, I love that signing and then Smith Schuster. Um, I, I can't believe he went back to Pittsburgh. Uh, that, that's so shocking to me, but you know, the Steelers are going to benefit from that. And I think that's a great signing. Um, I love the John Brown signing because the Raiders lost Nelson Aguilar. Uh, they need someone to replace him. Uh, so he's going to provide the deep threat for Derek Carr. Uh, now granted Carr's not going to have any protection to get the ball downfield to John Brown, but like theoretically it's a good signing at least. Um, well, I mean, maybe, maybe their, their backup lineman will work out, uh, but probably not. Um, and I, I like the Carlos Sam Samuel signing. I'm not not like as high on it as you are, but I think it's a good it's a good fit for sure. Um, and yeah, it'll give the Redskins a dynamic weapon. Um, you know, they can use them all over the place. Uh, so I like that a lot. Um, and that Kenny Galladay, I think you know he got the most money here, um, but I think deservedly so. I, I like the Giants really needed a number one receiver, and yeah, maybe they overpaid a little bit, but um, to they have to give Daniel Jones uh, the best chance to succeed as possible. Um, and to do that, uh, they had to give him a number one receiver and Ky Kenny Galladay was the best guy available. Uh, so I, I have to at least uh, admire the giants for, uh, making sure that, uh, Daniel Jones can succeed. Yeah, I I'm not as high on the Galladay signing. I just think like, I like him as a player, uh, but I think there is some injury risk to him and I'm not, I'm not sure how well he's uh, going to separate as he gets older, if he deals with more injuries. So I think there's a little more risk in it for me. Um, but I, I do think that the Giants had to make a move like that. So I do support their decision to do it, especially because it'll free up Darius Slayton more uh, because, uh, you know, teams won't be treating him as the number one receiver there anymore. Um, so there, there were uh, there were a couple other uh, que more questionable signings. I know what the Patriots did uh, particularly stands out. Um, it seems like they overpaid a bit for Aguilar, uh, Nelson Aguilar. I think that he'll fit well on the offense, but 13 million a year or 11 million a year plus incentives, whatever it is for him. Um, I think that was a little bit too much for him. 
Um, and, you know, Kendrick Bourne, I like him as a backup, but they're paying him like low end starter money. So um, I, I'm not not sure I'm in love with that. I Again, though, I, I think these two players fit well with what the Patriots want to do and need to do really more than anything else uh, because they needed pass catching weapons for Cam Newton or whoever else is going to be their quarterback. Uh, but there's definitely reason to, uh, you know, look at those signings and say that they overpaid a bit. But I, I think I'm higher on Aguilar's fit than most probably are. Uh, but yeah, the, this was uncharacteristic of the Patriots to overpay for receivers, but they need the help because they cannot evaluate talent at the position. Yeah, I, I mean, based on these signings, they clearly can't. I, I don't understand this money that they gave out. Like, if they gave Aguilar like a a one year five million dollar deal, I think that would have been fine. Uh, but obviously, you know, they, they thought he was worth more than that. Um, and I just don't say it. I mean, he dropped so many passes, and I, I know he had a good year with the Raiders, his first good year. And like, maybe that's a sign of things to come. Um, but man, I, like you gave him more money than Will Fuller got. Uh, it just doesn't make any sense to me at all. Like you could have had Will Fuller, you could have Juju Smith Schuster, um, but you decided to pay Nelson Aguilar thirteen million a year. Like that's crazy. And Bourne's okay, like, but he's still making more than he should. I think like seven million a year. It seems like a, a more than that. Like Juju Smith Schuster is making one million more per year than 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 Kendrick Bourne. This makes no sense. Uh, I, you know, I think the worst signing here, I think, is Corey Davis. Like three years, thirty seven and a half million. Uh, I get the upside. I mean, he was the fifth pick in the draft a few years ago, uh, but he really hasn't shown anything. Like he had a few good games last year for sure. Uh, like, but before that, he, he like he was just a bust. Um, and you know, it's fair to wonder if he is playing for a contract. Um, and like maybe we see him regress. Um, like maybe not. Maybe he plays well, but I don't know if he can satisfy the the, the price tag here. What, what do you think about Corey Davis? Yeah, I'm not wild about it, especially when you see how the rest of the receiver market played out. When I first saw him sign for that, I was like, all right, I understand this. Like, there are a lot of receivers on the market. They're all going to get paid. It's going to be hard for the Jets to land the one that maybe the land the one they want. So they're getting Corey Davis. But it ended up being, you know, that uh, Corey Davis got the third most average annual value of receivers on the market uh, behind only Galladay and Nelson Aguilar, I believe, as of right now. And he's barely behind Aguilar at all, and he's getting an extra year on the contract. So I think Davis could pan out, but like you said, his best performance came in a contract year, so there's reason for skepticism. Um, if they had signed him to this type of deal, but like you know, it was really just like a one-year deal where this year was guaranteed and beyond this there isn't anything, I would have more faith in it. But I, th I think that it seems like they're committing to him longer term, uh, which is a calculated risk, um, especially if Sam Darnold's going to be the quarterback there. Like, I still think Darnold has upside, but like, if he doesn't pan out, then you're just wasting Corey Davis this year and you could have just put anyone out there. Yeah, that's true. Um, we, we got a request to talk about Dante Moncrief, which I think is a great <laughs> signing because it'll make the Texans worse. And that means they'll get the number one pick uh, next year. They, they have some tough competition. The Lions and the Eagles are both going to be terrible. So uh, the Texans need as many bad players as possible. And maybe that's why they signed Tyra Taylor. Um, and uh, a question here. Do, do you think Watson gets traded? I don't think anyone's touching that situation, situation right now until it plays out. Because uh, no one really knows it's gonna going what's going to happen. Like, are you going to trade multiple first round picks for a quarterback who can never play for you? Like, uh, I, I think it has to play out before anything happens with Watson. So we'll see.